What's going down, everybody? Welcome back to Cassius Morris Official and another brand new interview right here on the channel. Before we hop into it, just a quick reminder to hit that subscribe button with notifications on if you enjoy the content that I'm putting out every single day. Also, be sure to smash that like button and let me know what you think about each video down in the comments. Now today we have a quick check-in with comedian Aries Spears. Aries was kind enough to carve out a couple minutes in his busy schedule to come and check in with us. And this is just an appetizer, guys, because rumor has it, at least from what I'm hearing behind the scenes, that there's going to be a part two, most likely in person, coming up soon. So this is definitely just an appetizer for what's to come. Aries Spears is going on tour in Canada throughout the month of April. He has dates including April 11th at the Edmonton River Cree Resort and Casino, April 12th at Calgary's Grey Eagle Resort and Casino, and April 15th at Toronto's Danforth Music Hall. We have links to buy tickets to all of his Canadian dates down below in the description. Make sure to go and check it out. You will not be disappointed. Aries is definitely one of the top comedians in the live circuit, period. Hopefully you enjoy this short conversation with Aries, and again... I'm very excited for part two. I know there's a lot more for us to talk about. So let's hop into it right now. I'm actually out here in Edmonton, Canada. Um, it's funny. I, I actually heard you mention my city uh, in one of your specials, the I'm Smiling special. Um, you were saying that you came out here and you found that there were no racist vibes. I was actually surprised to hear you hear you say that about Western Canada. Uh, you said no racist vibes? Yeah, you were saying you came out to Edmonton. There was no feeling of racism, but you may have been the only black person where you were at. So I was like, okay, that's fair too. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I haven't done that joke in so long. I kind of forgot about it. Uh, so yeah, yeah. It, it may have uh, may have been some truth to that contextually. But I also heard you say that your wildest shows, some of them at least, have been in Canada. Is is there any truth th to that? Yeah, I think I was in uh, Calgary. Uh, and one from two chicks, two, two different shows, one chick, uh, threw a pitcher of beer at me and another one tried to storm the stage until a boyfriend stopped her. <laughs> the boyfriend always has to get involved. I find. Yeah. I was, uh, I was a door guy at a comedy club out here for like two and a half years. So I do find it, it gets crazy out here, but I could, I would imagine, you know, you've been pretty much everywhere in the States. I would imagine that's pretty regular for stand up. Uh, I mean, you know, listen, if you, if you stick around long enough, you see everything. So, uh, and, and if you're telling jokes the right way, uh, it's bound to happen. So, uh, yeah, I've been doing this 33 years, man. So it was just a question of time before I had some experiences like that. For sure. I mean, you know, does it, does it sort of, I mean, you make a good point. Are you missing the mark if you're not really offending people in some way as a comic and the audience is sort of just completely agreeable? Um, you know, I don't want to put out the message that you have to be offensive. Uh, but of course, we live in a day and age now where everybody's offended and everybody's looking to be offended. And, and being offended is uh, something that comes as, as naturally and as easy to people as breathing. Um, and, and certainly there are comics in terms of style uh, whose material and whose uh, comedic sensibility is, is, is far from offensive. Um, when you look at a guy like Brian Regan or Frank Caliendo, or, you know, more, more of the mainstream comics who are very family friendly, friendly, like a Jeff Dunham. So, uh, that, that's, you know, it's not something that I don't think one would aim to do, uh, because at that point, if you, if you purposely trying to do it, then you're forcing it. And, and, you know, I don't think that there's anything, uh, you know, uh, to be proud of if you're, if you're, if you're, you know, if you are full gazing, if you fake it, uh, but yeah. if you, if you, it just in terms of your style, if that is legitimately who you are as a comic that just, you know, you walk the line and you, you're an edgy person just because that's your style. Well, then that's another thing. Right. It's almost like you can't force yourself to be edgy, just like you can't force yourself to be clean. Like some guys, there you, go. you know, they, they try to fit themselves in those sitcom shoes and it just doesn't work for them. Exactly. So you should always, I mean, moral of the story is you should always be who you really are. 100%. You know, speaking of stand up, I actually saw something really interesting today. I wanted to get your take on um, this podcast called the Dudesy Podcast. I don't know if you've heard of this show. Um, Will Sasso is one of the main hosts on it. And he also has an AI component that he interacts with on the show. 
Um, and on the show, they created an AI version of George Carlin, and they actually released an hour-long George Carlin special that was AI, but it was George's voice. Um, and they're now being actually sued by the George Carlin estate. Um, just, good. You think good. that's a good thing? Good. Let's yes, so, I think I, I think I think AI is it could could have you know. I don't know if it can still be, but I know that's part of what the writers' strike was about. Was you know uh, AI, and uh, I think if 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 we're not responsible in regards to this, and we treat this in a careless manner, uh, AI may be the death of everything creative and original and true. Uh, so I'm not a fan of AI, uh, at, at least not in, in the sense that Hollywood like would like to use it. Um, I'm just not a fan of it because I, I, I believe in true authenticity and uh, nothing is more authentic than, you know, actual human beings. Right. So you feel like this was a disrespect because, I mean, even as his family estate, they're saying, you know, their father spent so much time and effort on his words that they don't feel like his voice should be used otherwise. Exactly. Um, you know, you know, people can try to duplicate something all day long. I mean, I, I'm a firm believer in as a guy, like most guys who enjoy sexual intercourse, you can't build a doll great enough for, to, for me to be replaced by a woman. <laughs> and they're trying. I know they've been trying, but, <laughs> but if you've ever been in real flesh, there's a big difference. 100%. So it's, it's never going to be as good as the real thing. So, I mean, could you see in any reality AI comedy shows taking off, like let's say it's in person as a hologram. Could you see something like that working? If if that happens, I'm done. Um, I that's will, what I'll, Aries is done. I'll, I'll bow out <laughs> of the business uh, because if that's what audiences want and 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 that's what they gravitate towards, then there's no reason for us to be here. That's a very good point. You know, you spoke a little bit on the you know how obviously everybody's you know. The cancel culture, the people being offended, it's a topic everybody's sort of spoken on. But really, my question on it is, is what has been your armor against that? Because Aries has been Aries really since day one, and you don't really seem to have been affected by the outside noise. Well, I think I have been affected by it, um, you know, in, in the Hollywood sense that, you know, I'm not their go to uh, when it mm. comes to film and television. Uh, but. At the same time, I'm, you know, listen, man, I was born in 1975. I'm an 80s baby. So I come from that generation of, you know, real soldiers, you know, so I don't know how to be any other way but me. Um, and, you know, uh, if, if if the threat of being canceled is something that hangs over my head or maybe I've been canceled and just don't know it, um, I'm going to die on that hill, man. You know, uh, it, it's, it's who I am. So uh, I've made it this far. Uh, for the last 20 years, I haven't been in a major movie. I haven't been on a major television show. And I'm still uh, one of the most uh, sought out comedians uh, to come see live. So uh, I think that's a testament uh, to my to my to my. Uh, to who I am as a person in terms of being genuine. Um, and, I, and I think sometimes the industry doesn't give the paying public uh, enough respect. Uh, in the sense that, you know, they're not dummies, you know, uh, they, they think that they could just put some shit together, throw it out there and people will eat it up. Um, and I think, again, real the buying public, real human beings want to be entertained by other real human beings. So uh, you can try to fast food your way through this as, if you want to. But uh, we all enjoy a good home cooked meal. 100%. So it's all about just just keeping that authenticity and, yeah, and not man, wavering. I, yeah, yeah. I, you know, listen, uh, will, will people buy slop? Of course. Uh, but I think that if it was completely that way to, to the extreme, then we'd all be out of a job. But I think at the end of the day, the buying public, like I said, they respect real, authentic, uh, original human beings. And, and because of that, uh, we all still have jobs. So you feel like it's, in a sense, cost you work, basically, is what you're saying, to have remained as authentic to your craft as you have. Yeah, listen, my, you know, my mouthpiece is my biggest power, but it's also my biggest detriment. Mm. And I feel like maybe a lot of comics could relate to that. Yeah, some can. Um, and then some are, you know, some are trying to make the necessary adjustments to stay afloat. 
Mm -hmm. It's all about that fine balance. Um, you know, also in the news these past couple of days was, of course, Kanye West um, back lately with some of his antics, of course, with his wife, uh, snatching a phone from a TMZ reporter for asking about his wife, asking if she had free will. Uh, did you get to see that video by chance? Yeah, I saw a snippet of it. What are your thoughts on sort of the, the latest Kanye antics and what he has going now? <clears throat> Kanye is Kanye, you know. Uh, I don't think anything should surprise us. Uh, he's he's who he is and all his diva like <clears throat> aura. So uh, if nothing else, it's it's entertaining. You know, Cat Williams said in in his latest interview that you know Kanye is is you know a known mentally ill person. So maybe people should stop bothering him and treat him as such. I mean, what are your thoughts on that sort of statement? No, nah, I don't think he's mentally ill. Uh, I think we got far worse, more mentally ill people. In, in positions they shouldn't be in. Uh, one of them may be the president again. So uh, I think Kanye West is tame in comparison. Right. Well, I mean, a guy like Killer Cam, he said that he's never seen Kanye, you know, be crazy and he thinks it's all an act. I mean, it could be. I, th I think it's a little bit of both. Um, you know, like I said, Kanye knows how to market Kanye. Uh, but at the same time, there's a genius behind his insanity. Absolutely. You know, real quick before we wrap up, I know that you you mentioned that the Cat Williams interview in your mind was pointless drama and didn't really seem to accomplish anything. Um, you know, I, I just in, in terms of your thoughts on that, do you feel like there was any positive aspects to it? Because, you know, in my mind, the way I saw it, I feel like if there's going to be ownership in the black community and people are going to come together and build do you feel like it helps if they realize that there's not as much ownership as they may think? Because I feel like the general public maybe has a perception that all these black celebrities have all this ownership and they really don't. Well, I think the key thing is what you just said, come together and build. And how do we come together and build when that episode of, of uh, uh, Shay Shay was anything but that? That was, that was the exact opposite of <laughs> coming together and building. You know, uh, like I said, it was a news cycle um, and it was water cooler conversation. Uh, so it, it, I don't see how it served the purpose of us coming together and building when it was the exact opposite of that. Right. So so maybe having more awareness about the way it actually works in the business, you know, you don't feel like that helps for the general public to come together. No, because there was nothing to pick from that that was positive. Hmm. Yeah, just a lot of criticisms in, in general. Um, you know, last question I had for you, Aries. I appreciate you making a little bit of time for me, man. Uh, the Eminem and Benzino beef, uh, of course, being ignited again by Eminem dropping a diss track. Uh, Benzino coming back saying he doesn't really have a beef with Eminem and he's caught off guard. Uh, do you think Eminem's too old to be doing rap beefs at this point? No, I don't think that if, if you're good at what you do, I don't think there's ever a time limit or an age limit that you should put on yourself. Uh, it's the reason why you are who you are. But Benzino should probably concentrate more on being able to uh, figure out how he can turn his neck and torso and, and, and without at the same time. <laughs> like, turn his neck without having to turn his torso. So Eminem may have had a point in what he said. <laughs> yeah, I didn't hear the diss track, but absolutely. Absolutely. 